Come on in. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Watch out for all the cords I have there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, come on around here and see what I have on my television set. What are they? Well, these are animals that came from the pond down here at the end of the street. Oh. Uh, and mostly animals that live in the mud. And uh, I wondered if you could uh, take a look at them and decide which one is the most famous in terms of uh, science. Famous? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh... First of all, do you have any tell. idea what they are? Well, is that a snail? I that's, that's a snail, snail. yes. And these, um, what do they look like? They just look like regular worms. Well, they're not. They're, they're uh, little tiny worms. In fact, come on over here. I'll take, uh, see, I'll put this under the microscope over here. And uh, I'll take this out. And just, you know, I'll, I'll turn on the lights. So we can see what they really look like. They're actually quite small, yeah. see? Yeah. They're pretty small. Aren't they? These are little tiny worms, and there, here was the snail yeah. that you were looking at, see, it's quite small. And here are these other little things down here. All different kinds. And then there's a, a, a little tiny thing, looks like a shrimp there. Yeah, I can hardly see it. Yeah, they're pretty small, and maybe with a magnifying glass you could see it a little bit, but what I'm, we're going to do is we're going to look at these animals under the microscope. So let me show you, that's what they really, the size of them. Now let me show you how it works up here. See, first I'll put them here in a, in a little slide holder. Now, see here's this thing, uh, I can move up and down this way, see? Yeah. Okay. That focuses the specimen up here. At the same time, all these lights I have down, shining down here, they move up and down with it, see? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the image then goes up here and goes through this prism right here. See that prism? Yeah. Well, the image then goes up here through a microscope. Oh, I and, see. And you can turn the handle up here, and that zooms the image, and you'll see. I'll do that later. Then the image goes in here through a television camera and around through cables and back over to here, and here it is over here. Now I'll turn the lights out again so we can see it better, see? There, there it is. There they are. Well, there's that little snail that uh -huh. you were looking at before. And there are the worms. And there are the worms, and there are these things. Now, have you any idea? Uh, well, first of all, describe. What do you know about a snail? Well, has a shell, a little yeah. shell. And, is it important uh, animal scientifically? Not really. Uh, not I think much. some people eat it, don't yeah, they? Yeah, some people eat them. How but, about these uh, worms? I don't know. They don't look very important, just regular little pond animals. Yes. Well, how about this little, uh, see that little thing there is a uh, side swimmer, it's called. Uh, and it looks something like a shrimp. Yeah, well, I, I think it's too small to really be very important. Oh, well, I remember bacteria, they're, they're very small. Mm -hmm. Well... I don't know, I just don't Well, then how about this one up here? I'll move it down a little bit so he gets more in the center, and you can uh, take a look at him a little better. There are two of them, see? What are they? Well, they're called planaria, or flatworms. Oh, I think they're the most important. Why? Well, uh, I remember reading um, something about them. Um, they did an experiment. They taught them something, and then they cut them up and fed them to other ones. Yes, and I, in fact, we're going to, I'm going to at least demonstrate how they did that today, and that's one of the reasons I thought we ought to investigate them. All right. That they are very interesting little animals. Now, remember I said I could zoom up on it? I'll zoom up on this one right here and see if you can sort of identify the various parts of them now. You have to move them up a little. Now, can you tell me? What do you see about him? Well, looks like uh, he has two eyes. Right? Yeah, two sort of eye there. things here, yeah. This is the head end. Uh-huh. And um, I guess that's just the body. And... Yeah, this is the body part here. It has sort of a tail down here at that end. Yeah. Yeah. Can't see very much. That's, well... It looks lighter over here than in the center. That's right. And notice he can move his body around like this. Yeah. Do they uh, eat regular um well, the, the, they eat mostly protein, so if you want to catch some, and I'd suggest that you do this in the summertime especially, you tie a piece of liver to a string and throw it in a lake and uh, wait there for a while and then pull the liver up and they'll come and they'll be all grouped around the liver and then you can just pull yeah. them off. And you can do some of the experiments that we're going to do with them. So that's a planaria, yeah. a flatworm. Now, one of the reasons they were, have been investigated for a long time is because when you cut them apart, each part will grow into a new one. Oh. In fact, I have some over here that were cut in three parts. Three? Three parts. And each part grew into a new, uh, new animal. And, of course, scientists wondered, what is it that makes a, uh, uh, an animal 
the cells of an animal change from being a head. Originally, if, this, if you cut this off right here, now that part that you cut off is going to have, the cells are going to have to change. What is it that, that makes it now grow into a new head? Not me. Yeah, what are the chemicals that go about determining this? And the tail also, it grows a whole new head. Yes. And a whole new body parts and everything else. Well, I'll put a slide of some of these under here and see if you can guess which one is which now. Okay. Now, on, the sli on this microscope slide is a little well, a little, uh, you know, hole. Mm-hmm. And there, there they are. Make sure I have enough water in there. They dry out pretty fast. I see I also had a side swimmer in the, in the, uh, there they are. Is that the side swimmer? That's the side swimmer. I'll, um, I'll get rid of him. I'll put in an eyedropper and see if I can suck him out of there. There, there he goes. Is. Well, there are the three parts. Well, now, wait a minute. I'll stay here at the microscope so I can use this little brush and get him out. Now, here's a, here's a full-grown one. See him? Yeah, full-grown. Yeah. Now, they, they go to the side. Now, here's, here's one of the parts. Do you have any idea which part that might be? This? The one in the center there, yeah. Well, um, I think that's the part that had the first head. You think? Well, now, there's a little tiny part. See it? Yeah. That's, that's probably the tail if nothing's growing. Yes, that's probably the tail. See if I can find the other part. They go over to the side here. Maybe I sucked it up when I took out the side swimmer. Come on, get off there. There. Uh -huh. Now, this part right here. Is that the middle that's part? That's probably the middle part. This part, over, the, this part that went over to here is probably the head part, mm -hmm. and that's the tail. It hasn't grown into a new one yet. Doesn't look like it's moving. No, it it probably is alive, but it, it can't swim yet. It does, you know, it doesn't have any brain, and the whole thing has to develop. And it may develop into a whole animal eventually. Oh. So if you want to do this at home when you get planaria and you can get some big ones, it's kind of hard to cut them because they keep moving. Yeah. So how what do you, you do is you put them on a layer of crushed ice, right on the slide on a piece of glass, and the the ice cools them off, and so they slow down. Oh. And then you can cut them with a very sharp razor blade. And then don't feed them or anything. Keep them around the house for, oh, it takes a couple of weeks before they start to grow again. And, and uh, students in high school have done some experiments with them, and they're kind of fun to do. You might try it sometime. All right. So anyway, that's one of the reasons why the animal was considered uh, important scientifically, because it could regenerate. Now I'm going to do a series of uh, tests on the animals, and I want you to see if you can deduce what their, their sensory mechanism is and how they you know, go about uh, responding to things. So I'll put a new slide on with just nothing but ordinary, big, adult plum area. Okay. They weren't cut, were they? No, these are, you know, full-grown, big ones. So we can see them nicely. Okay, there they are. They're all sort of resting at the moment. Yeah. All right, now, fellas, wake up. <laughs> I'll put a little, another drop of water in there because the water evaporates from these slides rather quickly. And, you wanna... and they need nice fresh water once in a while. All right, now let's um, let's get him moving. There he goes. Now watch what see what happens when I touch that one. They don't like it. They uh, they can tell it's there. So they have what kind of a sense would you call that? Um, I guess of touch. Sense of touch, right? When something touches them, they they what do they do? See how that one did? Yeah, he scrunches up. He scrunches all up. That's right. Okay, so they can do that now. Now watch what I'm going to see if I can get this big one right here. There. He turned back over. Yes, he turned back over. Well, then they can tell uh, what's up and down. Yes, they, so they respond to what kind of a force would that be? I guess gravity. That's gravity. Let me see if he'll do it again. Come on, fella. Now up we go. Over. Over. That's it. What's that, um, that little spot under? A little black? Well, see if I'll turn him over again and see if... if if I know what you're referring to. Yeah, that little that. spot right there? Yeah. Well, you look at how he twists up like a barber pole, see? Or a corkscrew. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that later, so you remember. Now, you'll, you'll find out when we look at a, what goes on inside of him. Okay. So you see, they respond definitely to gravity, don't they? Yes. Well, now, remember, I said, yeah, I said I could zoom up with a microscope. What I'll do is I'll zoom up on that edge like that, and we'll watch some of them swimming by. Watch. 
And you can get some idea of what their head and, and the rest of them look like. There you like. go. Okay, he's just sitting there. Let's get going there, fellow. Move. Come on, move. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up, yeah. Now, here they, here they come around from the other side. Now, stand by and watch them, because here they'll come. Where'd they go? Well, they're just sort of standing there. They, they don't want to go on television. They're lazy. There they come. Uh-huh. You can almost see through them. Yes, you can almost see through them. And notice they have little ears that seem to stick up. Yeah, right right over here. Yes, right right up there near the front end, right? Yes. And they have a sort of pointed snout, and then do you see what, what's up there in the front to it? Wait, that one is getting in the way there. Move. You with the tail there, move. That's <laughs> it. Now see the see those things in the front that yeah, you they, saw? They when, look like eyes, aren't yes, they? Yes, they they're little eye. Well, they're not really eyes in the same sense that we would think of eyes, but they, they do have two things here. And they respond to light. Uh-huh. And, and you see how flat they are? This yeah. is the edge of the well, you see here. And when they turn and swim sideways, you can see they're why they're called flatworms. Yes, I'll get them moving. Flat. I'll get them moving again here. Out of the way, fellow. Let's let somebody else here who's a little more uh, ambitious. <laughs> here comes one. See, they sort of speckle, too. And yeah. you'll find that when you feed them liver, they, they get the color of liver. And when you feed them egg yolk, which is another you know form of protein, where well, they get yellow because you can see right through them. And those black spots that we're seeing, uh, I want you to remember those because we're you're going to identify them later. Okay. Come on, fellas, you all going around the other side of the slide there, there. Well, they are thin. Now, some of the things which you won't be able to tell is is that they have a mucus which they uh, exude and they and they uh, uh, can stick on to things with it. And also, they have uh, they they can't swim in the normal sense of a swimming animal because they don't have fins and things like that. Every time I come over here, they go away. Hmm. I'll tell you, I'll fool them. I'll go to the other side where they're all yeah. punched up there. There they are. Oh, they are. Now they're leaving. Yeah, now they'll all leave. One of the reasons they do that is they respond to the light. Anyways, oh. I started to say they can swim, but only on the undersurface of the water and, and on the undersurface of the top of the water. There okay, well, now let's try something else. I'll put in a little uh, dye. Dye? A dye, yes. Let's go back to the low magnification. And I'll put in just a drop of dye, and you see what happens. Now, you notice how they swim around the edge all the time? Yes. Okay, well, I'll put a little drop of dye on one edge, right there where there isn't anybody at the moment. And you see what happens to them now. Oh, they don't like it. Then they can tell that uh, there's a chemical there. That's right. So they have sensory mechanisms for determining. See, they're even trying to swim over the top of the yeah. of the glass here to get away from it. Now watch this one right here. Oh. See? He didn't like that. No, he didn't like it. So they have sensory mechanisms for chemicals as well. And you see, every time one swims around in here, he's probably swimming over the top of it. Yeah. There they go. Now watch this one. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, oh he chickened out. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, another one. That's one of the things. We, that's one of the things with the, with these animals that every time you look at them under the microscope or try to work them, they're the most ornery critters you've <laughs> ever seen. They never do what you want, and they're they're performing pretty well right now. Yeah. So don't let's not complain. Half the time they go in the other direction. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's actually uh, sort of do the experiment. Let me turn the lights on and turn this out. Let's actually do the experiment that the scientists did. Right. At least set it up so that you can get the general idea. Uh, in order to do that, we have to see what their response is to electricity. Now, here are two probes connected to a battery, you see. Yes. And here are a little player. You take the two probes, and I'll, get, I'll wake them up. They're sleeping over here on the side. And get them out here in the center. And you take the probe and put it at the front and the back of one as soon as they get awake here and start moving. Right. Now, that one. See, put the probe there and there, and watch what happens to them. Okay. No, he didn't like that either. No, he didn't like that, did he? Then they respond to um, charges? Yes, they respond to electricity. I'll try this one. Whoops, he scrunched up before yeah. you started. Wait a minute now. We'll give him a chance to... Well, here's this big fellow. Try him. Okay. All right, now wait till he gets all stretched out. He's turning around. Yes. There all right, come on. Get, get straightened out there now. So that Alan can give you a shock. Yeah. 
Here he goes. Okay. Now, wait, 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 wait. Let, let him get nice and stretched. Away. See how he can crawl by yeah. punching his head? And they do that, and they can swim, too. So wait till he gets swimming. There. Okay. Whoops. Hmm. Quick, get him when he's stretched out ones. And... Okay. Ah, oh, got boy, him. you really turned him <laughs> over. Yeah, that's only six volts. Wow. It responds that, that yes. heavily? Now, they also don't like the light. So you could put a combination together of light and shock uh, in, in Pavlov's system. You remember Pavlov, the man who Oh, yeah. The... He, um, he did an experiment with the dog, didn't yes. he? Yes, what, what happened? Well, um, every time he was going to feed the dogs, he'd ring a bell. Mm -hmm. And um, after a while, uh, whenever he would ring the bell, the dogs would automatically expect food. Yes, and, they, and their saliva would start flowing in their mm -hmm. mouths. Well, a scientist by the name of Dr. McConnell decided that maybe he could train flatworms. They have a little brain and stuff. So he decided we'll give him a shock like this. At the same time that we give him a shock, we'll turn on the light. So let's pretend we're doing that. Right. I'll turn on the light, and as soon as the light goes on, then you give him a shock. Right. Okay, ready? Right. Okay, now take them away, and you turn the light on. Oh. Okay, just like Pavlov yes. and the bell and the food, okay? All right. Uh, here's, take this one out. Okay. Okay? Well, he didn't like that. No, he don't like that. Well, you see, they found that if they did this about 200 times, pretty soon the worm realized that the minute you turn on the light, it would scrunch up. Oh. So, that means that they learned something. Yes. Then, do you remember what, he, what they did after that? Uh, well, they cut up the uh, worms, yes. I think, and they fed them to other worms. Yes, and what happened? Well, the other worms uh, were able to learn uh, the same trick, but a lot quicker. Yes. So what kind of conclusions do you come to if you were a scientist? Well, that um, by feeding the, um, the, the worms that already knew the trick, um, the other, the increased the ability to learn in the yes. other ones. And they, they think that, that probably what happens is when a, a worm has learned something that the cells in its nervous system have the, some had some of their chemicals sort of rearranged. Oh. And then when you ground them up and fed them to the other ones, these same re, this rearrangement probably was maintained so that the, the, the second um, planaria, probably the chemicals would migrate right to the place where they belonged in the cell of the, in the brain of the new planaria, and then therefore he wouldn't have to rearrange them so, so much. Oh, see? I see. Yes. So, I don't think that you can figure that, uh, that uh, if you fed an animal, some, uh, another animal that learns something, that automatically the second animal is going to be smarter. <laughs> but, you see, scientists feel that probably our own memory is a, has a great deal of chemistry connected with it. So in order to study what goes on in memory or learning, why they use simple animals like this that they can do controlled experiments on. And that's why they studied it. And everybody was quite amazed to f find that a second planaria who had eaten one who'd learned, learned faster than one who hadn't eaten Yep. One area. So they're kind of, you could, you could reproduce what he did, and many high school students have done that. They have? Yeah, they've actually tried to train them, and you have to flash the light 200 times and give them a shock, and then pretty soon just the light alone is enough to give them a shock most of the time. They're very ornery critters. Yeah. Time well, now that you see how important they are scientifically, maybe you ought to see what goes on inside of them. Okay. Now, let's look at a diagram of what one of them looks like. Over here is the uh, overhead projector. And that's, that look like a planaria? Yeah, that looks like one. Oh, well, uh, start up at the beginning now. What, what, what do you suppose these parts are up here from your tests? Well, I guess those are the sensing uh, devices. Yes, you remember what happened when they ran into the die? Oh, uh, well, they backed they up. They backed up, so there are sensory devices in here. You remember those little ears that were sticking out? Yeah. Well, they're sense devices, too. You see the two uh, uh, oh. nerve cords that sort of go out there? Mm -hmm. Then... You ask about these things. Yeah, are those, are those real eyes? Because they look like... Well, they look like real eyes, don't they? And they look like cross eyes, too. But yeah. they're But they're not eyes in our sense. And we're going to see some films taken through the microscope at very high magnification, in which you'll actually be able to look at that eye. It really should be called, notice what they call it here, an eye spot. Eye spot. Yes. Now, connected to these sensory organisms up here are, is a long double column of nerves. Uh -huh. See? And this is one of the reasons the animal is often studied is because it's one of the simplest animals that... It, has symmetry, you see, both halves are, yeah. are like, very much like uh, uh, more complex animals. Then, this part in here is all of the digestive tract, or the place where the food goes. And you see what it leads to here? Yeah, is that that spot I That's saw? the spot you saw, that's right. Hmm. And it really isn't a spot, it's a tube. And the, the planaria can let the tube out, and another tube comes and it gets quite long, and it sort of chews up food with the end of this tube and can take it up into here, and then it's distributed to all parts of the body. It doesn't have a bloodstream like oh. we do. And then the, the food is, is uh, 
it goes right through the cell walls and is, you know, and is taken in through all the various parts of the body. So that's how the parts of the body get food. Then it's a mouth. Well, it's, yeah, this is the mouth down in the middle. That's right, yes. And to get rid of the waste materials, it, they go through little pores in the side of the uh, skin. Oh, so see. it's, uh, it's a, little, a little different, you know, than some of the higher yeah. animals. It's not very complicated. Well, when you realize what's going on inside there, it's, it's pretty complicated. In fact, almost mm -hmm. any animal is complicated. But it's a lot less complicated than, you know, than you and I and uh, yes. dogs and cats and uh, even snails. Well, now that you've seen these parts, let's look at this... Uh, film taken through the microscope at very high magnification and see if you can identify some of those. Hmm. Remember how we showed the film over there? You yes. get on that side of the screen and there's a projector back here and we shine it up here and we can see right here mm -hmm. what's going on. All right, well, let's take a look at it. There are the eyes. There are the eye spots. He does look cross-eyed. Doesn't he look cross-eyed? Yeah. And here, you see down here, notice it's rather thin. Yes. And, and this black section in here is basically his digestive tract. Goes all the way this, down? Yeah, this is about 25 times magnification. If you were looking through the microscope, of course, we've got it bigger here on the screen, so it's probably close to 100 here. But whenever I mention the magnification, it's the magnification that you would see through the microscope. If you oh. Look. So there's an idea what the whole animal looks like. Huh? It is pretty thin. And now I tried to get some pictures of him, of him moving so that you can get the idea of how he moves. What see, are those bumps? Well, remember those bumps. We'll talk about them later. Okay. Now, notice he can back up. Yeah. And that he puts his nose down and sort of grips onto things with a, the with a mucus. And notice that now he's swimming. But how does he swim? He doesn't have any legs kicking or fins or tail or anything. Maybe he floats. Well, no. You'll see later when we get to high magnification how he's able to move through the water. Now, this shadow up here is the edge of a, of a very shallow well slide. Oh. So he's swimming towards the edge all the time backing up now. There, you see, there's the edge of the, of the yeah. water. So he puts his nose up there and then backs away. And sometimes it's hard to follow him because they, they move a lot. Ornery critters. So, yeah, ornery <laughs> critters. So you think, ah, he's going in this direction, and you start focusing the microscope and getting him, zip, he stops and goes the other direction, as you can see here. Yes. But you see how thin he is when he turns over on the uh -huh. side? And there are those bumps again. There's eyes. Mm -hmm. Whoop, he doesn't have see? a nose, does he? he? Well, it's a, not a nose in the ordinary sense, you know, where he smells. He probably recognizes chemicals in the water. Oh. See, so it's a, it's a chemical-type sensor, very much like our noses, but it happens in the water. There, you see, twisted right over. Yes. And you can see, you can see almost through them. And at higher magnification, when you pour more light through it, why, well, you will be able to see through them. All right. Now, that, I sort of concentrated on the front of him there, so you can see the action of the front part of him. And the, the shot that's coming up, you're going to concentrate on that tube in, near the center of him. See, he hit a so bubble. There he goes, yeah. Now, here's the center part. See that tube? Yeah, it's, there's the mouth again. That's the mouth part. And all this dark section here is the, uh, the digestive part that the chemicals actually uh, come back. See what I mean about yeah. these? Uh, the chemicals go from this, this place in here, you know, to the cells all on the outside. So later on, we're all right, coming up here shortly, we're going to actually look at some of these cells and see how the food gets from that, that so-called digestive tract to the cells itself. And there it is. That's what he, sort of like blood. Does Although, he have blood? No. These are little globules of protein. He breaks the food up into very, very tiny globules, and then it's sent to all the cells, and then it goes right through the cell wall like osmosis. Oh, I see. So that's what he looks like inside the, you know, the jelly-like section of the cell. Globules of protein. There are there his ears, eyes and there are his eyes. This time, notice now, there's a spot here and then white, kind of yeah, around. Yeah, it's... why is that? Well, you'll see in a minute, because I'm going to take a very... Uh, this is about 100 times magnification here. We're now going to see the... I'm sorry, this is about 50. We're now going to about 100 times magnification, so you can see what the eye really looks like. See if it has a pupil, you know, and a cornea, and things like our eyes would be. There it is. Is that it? It doesn't look like an eye. No, it's a end of a nerve cell that is light sensitive and the cell the nerves themselves go down down to the brain and he recognizes light and dark oh. but he can't see you get There's some idea of, of the granular structure yes around here not much of an eye no <laughs> it's an eye spot you should really an eye say. Spot. yes mm -hmm. well now you remember those bumps yeah. Here's a picture of his head. And see, there's one there, and there's a couple more down yeah. in here. Well, what are they? Well, I wondered when I first saw them, too, and so I decided to increase the magnification and take some pictures of them. It turned out to be a very interesting surprise. Wait and see. Okay. Two things you'll find when you take a 
big close-up of the side of them. Here are those little things, and they're alive. They're animals. Oh, well, what kind of animals are they? Well, there? I wondered about it, and I looked through some of my books, and I think they're as, uh, aspidiscus, a so, kind yeah. of protozoa. <laughs> okay. Okay? <laughs> I'll take your word. It's a good name, anyway, aspidiscus. Now, this is about 100 times magnification, and in just a moment we're going to 200 times, so that you can see that's how he swims. See those little hairs? Yeah. They're, they're like paddles. Yeah, they're little silly, or little oars that stick out, and he swims through the water by beating those uh, when he's on the surface. He can't swim through the water up above, you know. Yeah, and here are the little asp discus. Uh -huh. There now is 200 times magnification, and you can see they're like a sort of uh, pushed-over walnut. There are the silly, yeah. the silly of the little hairs, you know? What do they do? Well, I think they probably are cleaning off bacteria that grow on the skin of the planaria. Oh. So they, there you can see the, uh, see the cilia there, yes. and I, probably bacteria. I know that, that planaria don't live well when the water gets kind of foul, loaded with bacteria, so I mm -hmm. think the bacteria attack him. And I think these little aspidiscus, there is a 200 times magnification yeah. that you can really see. There's cilia all around here in the front, and they sort of like vacuum cleaners. See it? See it has sort of a walnut shell tipped backward. Uh huh. That's a piece of dirt in the projector. It's oh. not part of it. Anyway, I was surprised to find that uh, they carry around little animals that help keep them clean. Very handy. And these are little tiny protozoa, much too small to be seen with a, with a naked eye, and you have to magnify them several hundred times in order to see them at all. Anyway, there you uh, get some idea of what what these look like when you look at them under the microscope. Yes. Okay, so now, if you want to get them, how do you get them? Well, well, you go down to the pond. Yes. And you take a piece of liver. I guess you have to attach it to a string or something. Right, and throw the string throw in, the, in. In, the, uh, in the river and then pull it up and pretty soon you'll, or leave it there for a while and pretty soon you'll have planaria. And then what kind of experiments can you do at home with them? Well, you can uh, test them with chemicals. Yes. And with light. Let me turn this on first so that you can point to it if you like. Okay. Get the lights. And, um... You can test them with uh, electricity. Yeah. And, um, and by so touching them. Come on. Oh, uh, yeah, by touching them. Fellas, let's move here. They're asleep again. Yeah. Anyway, you can do all kinds of experiments. Uh, you can touch them like this. You can give them a shock. You can test them for light. You can test them for chemicals. You could feed them all kinds of different food. And you could even train them if you wanted by combining light and shock, just as a scientist did, and see if you can actually uh, get them to... Uh, to learn. And that's why I consider the planaria one of the most famous scientific animals in the pond.